Hey YouTube, here I have this 5th generation iPad Pro 12.9 inch model number to be exact is A2379 and the issue I'm having is like it's not charging basically so you see the uh, the charging icon on the screen for a little bit then it goes not charging you're gonna see the plug and charging again not charging so basically it does not charge and from the uh, USB amp meter what we can see here is just does not get to uh, 14 volts or 15 volts it should not stay on 5 anyway and it just you can see it's just gonna be kinda resets itself goes back to 5 and this is battery is disconnected if I connect the battery it's gonna pull a little more not 4 though this is just not 4 amps this is just a glitch it's a glitch of this amp meter I see it's not not pulling anything at all now it just stays at 5 volt and uh, I already I already uh, took off a little bit of the heat shield here with the help of uh, the grinder but I, all I need to okay, all I need to do is just have access to the uh, to the CD3217 B12 chip which is actually uh, is the culprit here I'm gonna show you on the on the thermal cam here See, make sure it shows the correct stuff here. Yeah. Opposite direction. get in see and that's the chip in question that's the 32 17 chip it's getting hot okay so what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm actually gonna try to replace it with the uh, chip I got from Mobile Centrix. That's CD3217 for the MacBook. And uh, this chip, this particular one, I'm gonna show you on the microscope real quick. So this is CD3217 B12 with the small dot. And when I got these chips, I was actually, I was getting this chip from Mobile Centrix for the, for the other iPad Pro 4th generation. But the, that iPad had, had big uh, dot, big, big dot. And uh, from what I, you know, from the, my research, some people claim that uh, uh, chips from the mobile Centrix actually work on iPads but from our groups I found that actually it has to be taken out from uh, from the iPad so you cannot take them from the MacBook it has to be it has to be cheap from the iPad so uh, what I'm gonna try to do here because this is uh, you know definitely the CD3217 issue so what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to install this uh, chip from uh, Mobile Centrix and see how it goes. Because this is actually matching chip with a small dot. As I said, this is just uh, from my research that uh, the big dot chip has to be replaced with the big dot chip. 
and a small dot with the small dot. Like for example, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Like this is MacBook Air donor board. And you can see the CD3217 on this one, B12, is a big dot. As you can see, it's a big dot. And this is a small dot. So let's go ahead and cover up the heat shields all around and get this removed and replaced. So the moment of truth, I'm not going to connect the, actually, you know what, I'm going to connect the battery. Nope. And what about I disconnect the battery, what does it do? Nope. It's a different behavior, basically. Let me reheat that chip a little bit more. Because I'm not 100% sure it was soldered all the way properly. I need to add a little bit more flax. No, same thing. Oh, actually, no, it's not the same thing. 20. Hmm. or something. So I connected the screen to see what exactly it does and uh, They do have a charge, so it does not jump around anymore. It kind of charges, but it's five volt only and half amp, which is absolutely not enough for this device. So uh, it's safe to say, I guess, that the chip from Mobile Centrix didn't work, okay? iPad Air 4 board, donor board I had here. So I'm gonna reboil this chip and use use this chip and see uh, and see how it goes. Okay. 
So the moment of truth, actually. Let's see what we have. We still don't get the 20 volt or 14 volt. It's pretty high, 20. Hmm. Now this one appears to act similar to the way the first one was acting, which is super weird. Hmm. 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 Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to uh, replace the ROM chip and put the uh, Put the RAM chip that uh, came from that iPad Air 4 and see how that will work. And I want to show you what's happening here. After this change, the <clears throat> see we have 15 volts. Let's change it to 15 volts. The battery disconnected. Let me connect the battery, and we have 15 volts. Cap amp draw 0.8. See, 14.8, 2.2. So 15 volt, two amps draw. Nothing's going on, no blinking, no nothing. So everything is beautiful. If your CD3217 went out and the replacement CD3217 from the iPad does not work, make sure you know you check or uh, reprogram the ROM chip because that was the culprit in my case. Or another thing that might be happening here is if you replace the CD3217 uh, from a different iPad, not the same model iPad, you have to move the RAM chip along with that CD3217. Because maybe, because I, I have no idea if this RAM chip is bad or good, the one I removed. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Maybe it's good, it just did not talk to the CD3217 from the iPad Air 4, because remember, I took it out. This CD3217 is not from the same iPad Pro, fifth generation, 12.9 uh, inch. This CD3217 is from the iPad Air 4, and the ROM is from iPad Air 4. So maybe this CD3217, it just doesn't really talk well uh, with the ROM chip from the iPad Pro. So that is that's that's uh, that's a possibility as well, you know, because it could be you know different things basically. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day, guys, and as always, please uh, click that thumbs up button. It really helps to uh, grow my channel and subscribe. See you in the next video. Thanks, bye. Thank guys, bye.